Okay, we're gonna have a little bit of a follow-up here. And so what I'd like to do is very quickly talk about uh, what we just saw in our discussions, in our conversations. So getting more information is key. What do we mean when we talk about getting more information? Look back at the conversation, at the dialogue. You can see that each side is trying to say, oh no, your information is wrong, let me tell you my information. Oh no, no, your information is wrong, let me tell you my information. So both sides are always trying to influence or give out that information because information is king in a negotiation. Information is everything. This is key to a sex successful distributive bargaining. The four goals of the negotiator include, one, find out the other side's resistance point. Two, influence the other side's guesses. Three, influence the other side's outcome valuations. And four, influence the cost of delaying or leaving the negotiation the ways to actually get this done are called the tactics. Now we've kind of mentioned these already, right? But we just review them quickly because they're so key, right? What we want to do is we want to keep our secret secret and we want to get the other side's secret information. We want to try to figure out the resistance point if we can. We want to, if we could, get their target price, that would be good. We want to influence what they think of us and then we want to influence what they think the value really is. Okay, now we're going to look at a few specifics. It's a little bit too tiny here for the screen, but you can look inside your book and get the details. What we're doing is we're looking at very specific tactics. You see, so what we did is we started out at the beginning talking about the big idea, making some goals, getting a goal package, then we talk about some overall strategies, the four big strategies, now we're talking about distributive negotiation, then we get down to how do you actually do it, what is the actual tactics that you use, and now we're down to the very specific kinds of words you can use and the specific kinds of tactics you can use. So I'm not going to go over each one in a super detail, but what I would like to do is just quickly shoot over a few of them. Indirect assessment, for example. Indirect assessment means how can you find out what the other side's resistance point is? How do you find out what that resistance is? How do you find out what that target is? You can try to check information, maybe check the newspaper, check some articles, check the uh, accounting, uh, public accounting statements of the other company. So you can always try to get information, check the internet, see if you can find something out about the other side and that information will help you understand this product or this uh, price that you're negotiating over now. So indirect meaning try to find some information from another way. Direct assessment means find information directly from the other side. How can you do that? Well you could just ask, right? It's very doubtful they'll tell you, but you never know. They might not be careful about keeping their secret information secret. So you could just ask. Another one is, when they talk, listen carefully to what the other side says. They may be giving you a clue about their resistance point. They may, giving you a, may, they may be giving you a clue about their limits. Do you, are you listening? Uh, another way is you can just ask somebody on the team or maybe you have friends of friends of friends. Maybe you know someone who knows someone who knows someone at the company. Uh, that's another way. That's also kind of, it sounds indirect, but actually it's a little bit direct because you're getting information from people there. That's another direct way, actually. Screening, selective presentation, emotion, all of these are ways to observe the other side or influence the other side to make them think something which you want them to think or to make them react in some way to give you some information. You can also use logic and uh, hide information from the other side. Keep your secret information secret. Hide some information like what is your inventory, what are your sales numbers, what is your cost, what is your capital cost, what is your manufacturing capacity. You can keep these things secret, you can hide them, and that could actually influence the other side. So you can use um, 
logic, you can use outside partners, you can change the schedule of the meeting. For example, oh, we're supposed to meet this morning, but actually we can't make it. We have to postpone the meeting until tonight. Or maybe uh, the other team is flying in on an airplane and they fly for 12 hours on a flight. And then you schedule the meeting for early in the morning the next day and they only get a few hours sleep. So you can schedule things or change schedules to make the other side more tired. How does this help you? It may mean that they're not so good at keeping their secrets. They may make mistakes and tell you information that they would rather not tell you. I know that all sounds a little bit uh, kind of sneaky, a little bit harsh, but these are tactics that are used in negotiation. Again, the key point to remember is you want to get the other side's secret information any way you can. So now I want to look at some negotiation positions. We kind of talked about this earlier in another unit when we talked about how do you begin the first offer, how do you do a follow-up offer. So what I want to talk about is the tactics, the tactics you use to actually influence or to give the signal to help you win as you negotiate. Remember first that distributive bargaining is all about getting something from the other side. So it's important that the other side give up something and you don't give up something. Or the other side gives up more and you give up less. The key to this is to start with an opening offer that is not close to the resistance point. Remember that? Even your target point, right? We talked about what's your target price, what's your resistance. Now, you want to be away from your resistance and then you want to even be a little bit away from your target because the other side will push you over your target. Now, of course, once you begin, you can say things like in this example, I won't give up anything. Uh, I, I want to help you, but I'm not going to give up anything. So this is kind of the stand you need to take. I'm trying to cooperate, but I'm not going to give anything up. I want to help you, but I'm not going to give in. I would like to come to an agreement, but this is my bottom line. So this is the kind of normal negotiation stand you take with your position. You try to sound like you're helpful, but actually you're going to keep a solid position. You're not going to move. Now that's what you present to the other side. That's what you make the other side hear so that they think you're being positive when actually you're trying to also be tough. So what we have here are basically two attitudes. Friendly, I'm trying to help you, and tough, I cannot give you anything more. Friendly, I want us to be happy, I want us to win-win, but tough, this is my bottom line. So these two ideas together, these two attitudes, these two uh, ways, these two tactics to express yourself, call them friendly and tough. One way is friendly, one way is tough. Now when you negotiate, you mix these together, of course, but you tend to prefer one. Are you going to be mostly friendly or are you going to be mostly tough? So if you're going to be mostly friendly, then the opening offer is going to be further from the resistance point than if you're going to be tough. In other words, if you're going to be friendly, then your resistance point, you need to begin much further away because you're going to have to give up more because you're trying to be nice, you're trying to be friendly. Oh, okay, I'll give you something, I'll give you something, I'll give you something. This makes the other side think that you're, you're being friendly, you're cooperating, so you give up more and then they give up more and then you come to a conclusion sooner. The other way is to be tough. And if you're going to be tough, that means I don't give in. I don't give you one cent. I don't give one dollar. You keep saying it's my bottom line. I cannot give you any more. But if you do that, then you must begin closer to your resistance point because the other side is going to keep trying to push you, but you're not going to move. If you begin very, very far away and you're very, very tough, it's going to be very hard to get an agreement because you're so far and you're not going to move. And remember, in negotiation, it's a process. You have to give things up. You cannot give nothing up, right? But the question isn't distributive. Can we give up less? And can we get more? 
even though the other side may not like the tough attitude, this approach can make the negotiation shorter because you begin closer to your resistance and you say, that's it, that's all I'm going to do and I'm not going to change. And if you give something, you give very, very little bit at one time and then the other side gets tired and then you come to a conclusion faster. On the other hand, if you're going to be friendly, you need to begin further away. And if you begin further away from your resistance point, you have to give up something, give up something, talk, 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 give up something, give up something, and it takes more time. So the tough negotiation, although it seems like it's harder, actually, in the end, may make the negotiation shorter. Not always, but it is possible. Once the other side sees how hard it is, they're going to give up, they don't want to keep fighting, and then you can move forward. Okay, but if you're too tough, if you're too hard, what happens? Well, if you're too tough, if you're too hard, if you're too far from the resistance point and you're over the other side's resistance point, they'll just walk away, they will give up, they will not negotiate, that's possible. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at a nice simple diagram here. And in this diagram we can see um, what I'm talking about, a little bit more graphical, right? Let me give you a nice clear look at that. So we have an arrow, right? And this is moving through time, moving through time. So we're going to be moving across time from the opening offer up here over to opening attitude, first concession, more concessions, final offer over there at the end. So we begin and then we continue until the end. So what happens when we have our opening offer? Well, um, let me give you a nice clearer shot here, a nice close up. Opening offer. Don't start too close to your resistance point. Start further away. And then opening attitude means you start out friendly or tough. You can be friendly or tough. Of course you have a little bit of both, but you can be mostly friendly or mostly tough. But you can't really be half tough and half friendly because the other side will be confused. At one minute you say, I will not give, give anything. This is my bottom line. Uh, okay, I'll give you what you want. But that's my bottom line. Okay, I'll give you that too, but that's my bottom line. Okay, I'll give you some, but that's really my bottom line. This is my last bottom line. You see, that's very strange, right? Can't really do that. So what do we do? If you're going to be friendly, start further away from your resistance point. If you're going to be tough, begin closer. But try to be mostly one or the other. So as you move across, you have a consistent attitude. If you take a strong stand, then your first concession will be tiny. If you take a friendly one, then it may be bigger and you may give more. And then you give more concessions. How many do you give? If you're being friendly, you give many. If you're being tough, you give few. And finally, you get to the final offer. So the key point here is to remember the negotiation has a beginning and an end. So you've got to move through time. As you move through time, you're going to give something. How much do you give and how much time does that take those are key questions. Are you being friendly or are you being tough? Okay, let's do a little bit more follow-up here. And in this follow-up, if the concessions are made, the negotiation will not move forward. What does this mean? If you don't give anything, you cannot possibly move forward. So you gotta give something. You gotta give something. You cannot, you cannot give nothing. A tough stand, fewer concessions. A friendly stand, more concessions. In both cases, concessions are important. So I don't want to tell you be tough and you never give anything. You give something, but how many concessions and how much do you give depends on your stand. Concessions should become smaller though. Even if you're being tough, even if you're being uh, friendly, your concession should become smaller and smaller. 
In this way, the other side will think the concessions are nearing the resistance point. Now let me give you a little picture here to show you what I mean. So I like this picture because it's very easy to understand. So what we're saying in this picture here is as the negotiation moves forward, you give more concessions. You begin and you give something, you give something, you give something. Okay, now, what you can do is you can say, I'm going to give you something, $4. Or you can say, I'm going to give you nothing, $0. So I'm going to give you nothing. I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give up anything. I'm not going to change at all. Or I can say here, $4. So what does this mean? Well, I give you $4. I'll, I'll cut the price $4 for you. And then you say, oh, thank you, okay, blah, blah, blah. And then, you, then I say, okay, I cut the price another $4 for you. And you say, oh, okay, thank you, but you know the price is still too high. And I say, okay, I'll cut the price $4 for you. You follow me? So if I keep giving you $4, $4, $4, what do you think? You think, well, he gave me $4, then he gave me $4, then he gave me $4. He can give me another $4. So if you give up more and you keep giving the same amount, then the other side will think you can still give more. But a better way is you begin by giving $4, and then next time you give $2, and then next time you give $1. And in this way, it looks like you've already given everything you can give. So I begin by giving up a little bit more, and then I give a little bit less, and then I give a little bit less, and each time I give less, now it looks like I have no more to give you. You see? So over time, if you're being tough, or if you're being friendly, it's the same thing, it's just how long does it take? You give up less and less, so that the other side thinks you don't have anything more to give up. You cannot give nothing. You cannot just say, I give you nothing, because then it won't move forward. You have to give some concessions. But how much do you give? Well, it depends on are you being tough? Are you being friendly? And then you need to, over time, change that to be less and less. So as the negotiation gets very near the end, you give less and less, the other side gives less and less, what happens? As you get to the end, that's when the negotiation may get very hard. At the beginning, I give something, you give something, we both give something, that's normal. But then we get to the hardest questions, the hardest part. This is when we need to have that final push. This is very normal negotiation. You spent a long time, you worked out many things, you made a lot of progress, now is the final push. And that is not easy. So how do you final push to find your agreements? What's the things you can do, the tactics you can do for the final push? Here we have a few things in our book. For example, provide alternatives. Maybe you can give something else or do something else. Another thing you can do is assume a deal. This is very common. What does assume a deal mean? It means that we're talking, talking, and I want, I need one more dollar. And you say, no, I will not give you a dollar. And it's just a dollar. And you say, no, I cannot give you a dollar. And then I say, okay, it's a deal. And you say, no, no, well, I didn't give you a dollar. I said, no, no, that's okay. I know you're going to give me a dollar. I assume, I assume. I just say, well, we can do it. It's okay. I think you'll do it, I trust you, I believe you, and then you just say it's a deal. It's not really a deal, but sometimes that works. You can also split the difference. What is split the difference? Half and half. The little bit that's left, just cut it in half. A deadline offer means I'm going to give you some time, and before this time, if you agree, it's okay, but after this time, game over, I'm walking away. That'll give the other side pressure to push to the end. Sometimes you can do what's called a sweetener. A sweetener means you give something extra. Maybe you promise to buy more, or you promise to, in the future, buy from them again. Or as a supplier, you promise to give them a new product in the future, or a product they don't have today, or a product that's very popular in the future, like in our example. So 
to sum up today a lot, a lot of material in this chapter a lot of technical material, a lot of detail material, especially on the vocabulary and those charts showing you the different tactics. Why so much detail? Because today's chapter is about tactics. How do I do it? It's easy to talk about, but how do I actually do it? And then what's the main point today? We take away from this chapter, this unit, we take away this idea of you've got to make the other side lose something so that you can gain something. There's just no other way in distributive bargaining. How do I do that? Well, you've got to give something. You've got to give something, but make sure what you give is smaller than what you get. How do you do that? Carefully make sure as you're moving forward through the negotiation, you make the other side think, I cannot give any more. I've given you four dollars. I've given you two dollars. I've given you one dollar. That's all. I don't have anything more to give. By making the other side think this, you create a situation where they will soon stop. Or the other thing is get their secret information. If you know their resistance point, if you know their target point, then you're able to make offers that benefit you more. Not easy to do. How do you do it? Talk to them, ask them, watch them carefully, listen to them, watch their group who is saying something, maybe ask friends of friends, check information okay so a little bit detailed hope you didn't fall asleep good luck with your negotiation and see you next time <laughs>